Hello and welcome. You are watching News X and I am Megha Sharma. Sambhal in Uttar Pradesh is embroiled in a web of politics and shocking disclosures. In a significant breakthrough, the forensic teams have recovered six cartridges made in Pakistan and the United States of America from the drains at the incident site. One of the cartridges has Pakistan Ordnance Factory inscribed on it, while another one was manufactured in America. Additionally, there are two 12 bore and 32 bore shell casings that have also been recovered. Meanwhile, the leader of opposition Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra were stopped by the Uttar Pradesh police at the Ghazipur corridor, corridor while they were en route to the violence stricken Sambal. They were asked to return home. The Sambal investigation has brought to light major revelations prompting the key question, what is the larger conspiracy at play? Who is supplying the foreign ammunition to the writers? Let's start this conversation. Joining me on the telecast is Professor Madhav Nalapatsa. I want to understand from you with these startling revelations that are coming to fore, where these uh, shells and arms and ammunition that have been found at the site of the riot that took place several week, couple of weeks ago, it is it's US manufactured and Pakistan manufactured uh, uh, weapons. Well, uh, both would be in abundant supply uh, in Pakistan and there is no secret, unfortunately, a lot of this kind of violent activities are encouraged by Pakistan. I am a bit more surprised about Rahul and Priyanka trying to go to Sambal, if you ask me frankly. I mean, uh, I would not have advised Rahul, for example, to uh, basically say waive the constitution and then say he wants to go there, when it is very clear that prohibitory orders have been uh, imposed and under the law, uh, nobody in, from the public is allowed to go there. So, frankly, the constitution is very clear that he should not go there. Uh, and, you know, if, uh, if you would like to abide by the law, he should not go there. I would not advise Priyanka, uh, who has just been sworn in as a member of parliament, to say, well, he's the leader of the opposition. It's a very high constitutional position, and I congratulate Rahul on getting it. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, be, uh, being the LOP, does not mean that you have a right to break the law. In fact, an LOP should be even more careful of keeping to the law. So frankly, where the constitution is concerned, the constitution is clear that uh, no one should go there and add to the tension and, uh, you know, and simmering uh, feelings that are already there and they need to cool down first. Mm. So. Okay, but then you know it's also also the contention of the opposition parties, and so this is not happened for the first time, Professor Nalapat. There have been several times, whether it is about the Manipur tensions or there had been in the past several months another such incident that had taken place in Uttar Pradesh, which had turned violent, and Rahul Gandhi had tried to get into 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 Uttar Pradesh in that particular region. He was refused entry. So, and, and, and this has been the contention of the opposition parties that the governments that are run by the BJP in these states, whether it is Manipur or Uttar Pradesh, are deliberately stopping them from entering into the premises. Look, it is against the law, period. It is against the constitution, period. A government that has been elected by the people and admittedly the UP government has been elected by the people of UP. They have a majority in the state assembly a comfortable majority and uh, the, the reality is that according to the law, you should not be going there at all. Mm. So talking about abiding by the law and abiding by the constitution, which all of us as citizens should do, definitely, then you should not uh, go there. And you have got parliament, both of them are members of parliament, it is the most august forum in a democracy and you can voice your concerns in that very august forum. Okay. But Whatever is happening, okay. there is nothing stopping you. Hmm. San Sanjay Sai, former IPS also on the telecast with me. Sanjay Sai, again, you, what the political parties in the opposition contend is that the laws that have been imposed by the state police uh, are on the orders of the state government and therefore they want to question about every single time there is tensions that flare up in any part of the country, particularly in the BJP rule states. Uh, these laws are implemented solely for the purpose of not allowing politicians to enter into these areas. Now, how sensitive does the situation turn? if there are politicians, political leaders who are allowed to be in such sensitive areas? 
See, it has been going on for a long time that in case there is a communal crisis or there is any law and order situation, the political leaders have all, all, always tried to visit those places. So people in power, they certainly go to those places and uh, naturally the leaders in the opposition also try to make it to those places and in case they are not able to make it to the concerned places, then they make a hue, hue and cry, which means they get a political mileage out of it. Now we come to the what is the politics behind the whole thing. So no government is ready to allow the opposi opposition political parties or their leaders to go to places where they feel that it will not be in the interest of law and order. That is primarily on the face of it. It can also be that if they cannot, if they are not able to get the political advantage. So in that part, if they are able to get the political advantage, then they will try to see that these people are not able to be there. Now every uh, law and order crisis, law and order situation is not exactly the same that we need to understand. And at the drop of the hat, we cannot talk about constitution and different provisions of the law. Constitution is a general embodiment of what nature of legality and what are the principles on which these things operate. Finally, it comes down to the criminal procedure code and variety of other criminal laws by which you decide. Earlier it was 144 section. Now I don't know what is the, uh, the section under the current uh, change criminal law. So 144 is also clearly that it cannot be imposed just on just on the uh, on the premise that there will be a likely law and order situation. If it has reached a level where you are not in a position to control by any other means, and entering an area where there is a law and order situation with reasonable limits is allowed, not yeah, that it okay. is not allowed. Now the political parties battle it. See the unfortunate part is that whatever might be the political party. That political party wants to use the government, wants to use the law in furtherance of their interest against the interest of the opposition parties and at the end of it all, hmm. it is basically getting power. That is that is where it stands. Okay. If the technical uh, yeah. legal details yeah. uh, start getting challenged. You know, you know the, uh, the, the, the term that has been uh, created for such kind of activities where polit polit politicians, political leaders want to travel to all these uh, tension ridden areas is, is political journal, uh, political to, to, uh, tourism uh, and, uh, and, and this political tourism has uh, uh, allowed for mileage to be gained by the leaders who I, then end up traveling to I, all these I, places I, and I holding speeches and talking to the people of the aggrieved. Being given to it, the other form of understanding from a very democratic standpoint, whatever might be the political party in power and the different political parties in different states and over the last 75 years nearly all political parties have come to power and have been out of power so it also means that if this is uh voyeurism or this is some uh, political journalism or whichever way you call it which means whatever the government dictates there cannot be any other way of putting in your grievance and taking it to a to a level wherein there can be different points of view. Yeah, but, but you know, again, all. again, how the state uh, when, when the opposition talks about how the law and order agencies work at the behest of the state governments or the central government when it comes to Delhi, or when the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate are working, no, we are not getting, using, we are not getting into using, the, you know, being used as tools of vengeance by by the BJP. So all all these issues come into being. So again, again, whether 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 these agencies actually actually are being taken at face value by the opposition parties or are these at this point of time blame game that is played by the opposition and 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 the party that is ruling that particular state at that point of time sumit let's let's hear it from you as well about about the situation that has come to a head although the crisis now has been averted but belatedly because there were six people who died in this incident. There is also the Pakistani link that is emerging at this point of time, these cart cartridges that have been retrieved. Uh, uh, it is a tense situation, it is a communally sensitive area. Uh, uh, are politicians justified in wanting to travel to this place, be in Sambal, speak to the victims and what uh, is wrong if they want to do it? Megaji, thank you very much for having me on the show. Let me put a couple of points in perspective. The first and the most important thing is that, you know, the Reuters came, they destroyed the police CCTVs, then the CCTVs of nearby shops put police vehicles on fire, 
fired at the police and even the personal vehicles of police walas were targeted as a point number 1 now the people who are accused or who are whose name is in the fir is the samajwadi party mp bark and mla's son who has mobilized the crowds that is what we know and after and the people who have died for the sake of record five or six who have died is by 315 bore ka katta that is what the honorable dm has given in public it is a, a injury which is caused by 315 bore local made country made pistols not the slrs or not the ak's or not the revolvers used by up police now when this happened akhilesh tried to make a lot of ruckus two days back it was on your channel when he was saying look it's all done by bjp it's all done by bjp it's all done by bjp because you are mp and you are mla are directly accused things become more dangerous when we see pakistan made bullets when we see us made bullets now definitely when there's a pakistan made bullet and our fact and it has a ordnance factory pakistan that means there's a isi hand into it now if there's a isi hand into it the question which should be asked to mr akhilesh yadav is your mp or is your mla with isi who is in cahoots with the isi how did these bullets reach the place and who fired these bullets where did the 32 bores and the other rifles come from you people is doesn't use this weapon now i want to ask through your channel today mr yadav you are alleging that bjp did this are the up police did it does up police use made in pakistan cartridges do the cartridges or the ammunition of up police come from pakistan no it doesn't come from that is where the problem is and when you are such a political angle in it when you were trying to flare up the emotions and trying to cause ruckus and then you tell that then you tell the law and order is the problem of yogi adityanath that is exactly his spokesperson was talking one day back it says his problem now when you have this pakistani angle american made bullets and on the top of it this third political party who has dwindled his fortunes in up they are nobody in up and they know in order to be relevant in indian politics they have to do something in up he is jumping the gun that is mr rahul gandhi and priyanka gandhi wadra ji they want to rush there they want to get all the photos at least if you stop them they want to get all the publicity who have been stopped and when we talk of sorry when we talk of uh, you know communally sensitive area is that 77% population becomes uh, of muslim population becomes communally sensitive 85% population of hindus all over the india becomes communally liberal and non sensitive zone these are again some of the things which are said and now if you have a pay, if you have a place where the mp and mla son are directly accused and nominated in the fir and akhilesh yadav even went to dropdi murmu ji trying to get a you know some kind of a leave for his mp he did not get it even his mp said i was not in sample how could i have done it like with that like with daud ibrahim doesn't have a branch office in delhi neither has the ifsi in hmm. gaziabad so okay. how was this possible so tani okay. angle and isi angle who is in cahoots with isi of pakistan that is the billion dollar question now Okay. okay all right gautam mukherjee again i would be very interested in hearing your views uh, one is the political angle that is being discussed of course there was quite the commotion that was caused earlier today when rahul gandhi and priyanka gandhi wadra were traveling on their way to vote, on their way to the gazipur border they were asked to take an about turn and were sent back to delhi uh, that's the political angle on the other side there's a more heinous a uh, sinister plot uh, that seems to be unraveling with these cartridges and other weapons that have been found the shelling that has been found this has uh, manufactured in america uh, which has the stamp of the pakistan ordnance factory uh, how do we how do we tackle particularly the latter issue well we come to the first things first all that was asked for is a survey authorized by the court and this was uh, like a posse waiting to attack because as soon as the survey was uh, you know initiated these people came out with their pakistani bullets and their american guns and so on and therefore it clearly indicates a, a premeditated conspiracy uh, you've got people in um, you know sambal certainly who are afraid that the mosque may have to be brought down because as usual it's on top of a temple so this time they want to preemptively strike there is a three member committee now looking into it one is a retired judge one is a retired ips man and another one is a ias man they are quite competent to get at all the reasons and where uh, the conspiracy theories and so on uh, it's unfortunate in a way that the supreme court has put a stop to the survey because it sets a very bad precedent there are a number of other surveys also in the works one in mathura one in banaras 
uh, one in uh, uh, Ajmer. Now, all of these need to be done because they are, you know, they, they, they serve two purposes. One is that these places seem to be uh, aggregating points for anti-national forces. You've had uh, the people who uh, did the beheading in Udaipur run to the Ajmer Sharif. And, uh, you know, that is now largely forgotten in the public eye. But the fact is, they were sheltered by that particular darga. They were apparently trained within the precincts and within the influence base of that particular darga. And uh, in, in, in uh, Banaras, uh, the thing has progressed quite a lot. Uh, Gyanwapi, and the chances are that something will be done over there to conduct Hindu worship rather than, uh, you know, let these people get away with it just because it was done centuries yeah, ago. But then, you know, and, the, the, and the, the very raising... genesis, no, but, but, but Gautam Mukherjee, the very genesis of this rioting that has taken place is because uh, the court. Uh, the trial court has passed the judgment and ordered for a survey to take place. And, and this is with the intent that has been put forth by the petitioners talking about how there is the presence, existence of a temple on the ruins of which the mosque had been built. Uh, there was a very uh, prudent statement that had been made by the RSS chief, chief Mohan Bhagwat after the Ayodhya verdict was announced by uh, the Supreme Court. He said that uh, uh, notwithstanding the Ayodhya verdict that was in favor of the Hindu petitioners, it is important that the Hindus do not try to look for temples in every, on, in every single mosque that is existent in our country. Uh, the Supreme Court, when it overturned the order of the trial court in Sambal, spoke about how the courts should be prudent in their observation and ensure that there is no untoward incident takes, that takes place. Harmony and calm should be the precedent uh, on the basis of which judgments and orders need to be passed. Well, uh, Megha, the thing is, Mohan Bhagwat had, can have an opinion, but he's not the Pope. He's not dictating to the Hindu masses what can and cannot be done. He's entitled to his opinion. The fact is, the large masses of Hindus are very agitated about all these mosques which have been built specifically on top of temples in order to humiliate Hindus. This was done by the Mughals and it has been supported so by are the we, Are we going to rewrite Act. history? Are we going to rewrite history? Are you going to raise every single mosque? in the in in the area of north india and then build temples on top of them is this is this right is this ethically morally uh, and legally right uh, coming back to you professor madhun alapad how do you view the situation now irrespective of whether uh, it was the muslim writers who attacked the hindus the hindus got killed now there is this political slugfest that is taking place the very genesis to start off how this entire issue escalated to such a level is, is, is something that uh, the trial court made a decision on. It ordered that inquiry. It ordered that survey to be taken place. Do you think uh, it, it, is, it, it was right for the courts to pass that judgment? Look, uh, Mega, I want to point out that if you check my writings for right from very, very long ago, I have said it is Kashi, Mathura and Ayodhya that are important. These are the three holy sites of the Hindus. And yes, it is a fact that hundreds of uh, temples were destroyed and mosques were constructed on them. Now, the problem is that you have written history falsely. Many of our history books say that there was no plundering, for example, of several of these locations. The plundering was done by, by Shaivites and Vaishnavites fighting each other. Look, Shaivites and Vaishnavites may not like each other, but they are not going to fight and destroy a temple. Now, this kind of fake history, unfortunately, has been told in India. Um, I mean, the British uh, did it, and frankly, it was it was uh, speeded up uh, after independence. And an entirely wrong history of India was given, in which you know, 
uh, what took place was glossed over and uh, the wrong people were blamed. I think that, frankly, has created a certain amount of anger and resentment. Mm. History, are mature people, we can judge the situation. And yes, I quite agree with you. It will be a hornet's nest if you try and do this everywhere. That's why I have always focused on Kashi, Mathura and Ayodhya. Okay. As far as our places are concerned, yes, okay. you want to survey, you find out, yes. Mm. But of course, quite frankly, I feel these are three sites that need to be restored. And I think, frankly, we should know the truth. We should be t t teaching the truth instead of teaching lies and untruths. Yeah. In our yes. Yes. But the reality so, is yeah. that I have long said that, and uh, I have also said that the Indian people are mature enough to know the truth. And if you know the truth, then there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So All right. teach them the truth. Yes. So Sanjay, Sanjay Sai, talking about rewriting history, talking about you know altering the text in our history books is one thing but then uh, going about destroying mosques and rebuilding temples on them on top of them simply because we have uh, concrete evidence that uh, these mosques and other places of religion were set up on the ruins of temples do, 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 do you think this is a, a prudent judicious act that can that can be allowed by the courts of law in our country? See, what you started with earlier that the courts decide on the basis of the law and order situation and the likely apprehension of the breakdown of law and order situation, <coughs> that is not the case. Whether law and order situation emanates or does not emanate, that is the prerogative, that is the duty, and that is mandate of the state government, duly supported by the central government, as the case may be. So that is with regard to the way judgments are done in the Kaveri case. We, rem we remember of a very clear cut situation where the court directly told the honorable chief minister of Karnataka that handling law and order, law and order situation is your baby. Don't come like a crying baby to us that I cannot handle my law and order situation. So that's point number one. Point number two, how Ayodhya, the locks were unlocked and what orders came and finally how the history unfolded for us. So that all of us know, there is no need to repeat even one point of that particular saga. Now, when we come to 1991, we have this Places of Worship Act, which clearly states that post-1947, the character of any religious institution shall not be changed as approved, as consented, as legally mandated by the, by the Union Parliament. That is 1991 Act. Now, why Gyan Wapi happened, I have absolutely no idea. I have, though I have not been a student of law, I have been practicing law for at least last 32 years. And for a very clear cut section 3, 4, 5, whatever is there, it is clear cut that it need not be touched. After the non invasive survey, what do you do with that? So, you are already creating a powder keg or whatever arsenal or some uh, bomb to blow because you have and things have been done. Absolutely. And from, from there you come to Sambal, there you come to this and it is an endless story yeah. and uh, we are nobody to decide that these three are important from a legal point of view, from a religious point of view, which you can, you can decide in okay. whichever manner. Okay. Right. And so nobody, can, nobody can dictate the legality. Yeah. And as far as what the history has been written, one thing I'll tell you, I've studied only 25 papers of history in, uh, in, in, Delhi, in Delhi University. And the way it is being projected that this was done like this and that one done like that, there are aberrations in history. There is absolutely nobody denying that fact. But that it is dictated that all the historians have been dictated to write in this manner and this is the only way the history has been written. I think that is too much of a simplification of okay. history. Okay, all right. Sumit, so, let, let's hear it from you. Uh, to maintain and keep the peace and harmony uh, of our country, uh, should the cases such as these be taken under the ambit by the courts and ensure that the intent behind such petitions being filed in court need to be transparent and not against communal disharmony that they have the potential of happening. We see Megaji two or three quick points here. First of all, when you talk of communal harmony, it's a two-way it's a two-way ticket. It's not a one-way ticket. 
secondly if there's a muslim more dominated place the moment you talk of even of a non ehsu survey it becomes a law and order problem and in the same breath we are talking on the same number to 24 no, no, city I'm, 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 i mean uh, let's let's keep it clear this was not a non invasive survey that had been ordered by the court uh, yeah, the intention thing. of the petitioners was right Uh, they were seeking the they were seeking to know if there was a temple that existed correct, and then correct. take and then take further action as to how right. the temple could be rebuilt on that particular right. site right. you see you see the problem here is non ehs we have means that you are not doing digging you are just doing the photography you are not disturbing the place second thing play it was a archaeological survey of india site Point number three: There were two years or three years back, the people who were running the place were beaten and taken out, and the, it was converted to a mosque. Point number four: It, uh, you know, the place of Kalki Avatar is there. And point number five: When Muslims are not willing to give on Mathura and Kashi, they say, "I miss my legal right; I'll fight it in the courts." By the same virtue, by the same yardstick, and by the process of natural justice, why should I, as a Hindu, say, "I'll trade off this; I'll trade off this"? If you do, if you want to take Mathura Kashi to the court, let's take everything to the court. Did they show magnanimity in Ayodhya, Mathura Kashi? then i could have spoken okay let's not get into it but when it comes to your rights you are doing what it what is as per sharia and even today you are saying siddhi vinayak is my property you are saying a 1500 year old temple and village is my property while as islam is 1400 years old bhai even this kamnal hamini cannot be a one way ticket now how can Okay, let, I'm not going to mix those two issues again. That other issue of the Waqf Amendment Bill is in the Parliament right now. There are discussions being held how it's going to be amended. There has been a joint parliamentary committee that has been formed. But Gautam Mukherjee, an eye for an eye, makes the whole world blind. Well, you know, Gandhian philosophy is out of date. Let us understand that we have indulged this. For seventy, well, sixty of the seventy-five years, certainly the Places of Worship Act is a partisan act created by what is now the rump of an opposition. The majority of Indians, that is Hindus, want something done about all this, and it will be done one way or the other. It is no use saying, "Oh, you see, the Places of Worship Act." Well, it should be abrogated. It should be abrogated. This is what the Indians want, and it will be done. Okay, all right. On that note, uh, I, I still at this point of time feel that there may have been forces uh, that may be pushed by the communal agenda that have allowed for this situation to. Have worsened, and this could have been completely uh, averted. It is, this could have been completely uh, taken out of the entire uh, picture that at this point of time has unfortunately happened. On the, I'm thankful for all my guests for joining me on the telecast, and thanks for watching NewsX. अगर आप बनना चाहते हैं एंकर या फिर आप में है जुनून एक तेज तर्रार न्यूज रिपोर्टर बनने का तो आप ज्वाइन करें आई और इंडिया न्यूज न्यूज एक्स का मीडिया स्कूल आई नेक्स्ट मीडिया इंटरनेशनल स्कूल का कोर्स आपको मौका देता है देश के दिग्गज एंकर्स के साथ काम करने का आई नेक्स्ट मीडिया इंटरनेशनल स्कूल में आप बेहद नजदीकी ऐसी देख पाएंगे किस तरह ऐसी आई नेटवर्क के दिग्गज पत्रकारों की टीम दिन रात खबरों आरोप काम करती है इस कोर्स के दौरान आप सीखेंगे एंकरिंग की एक एक बारीकी उन एंकर्स के साथ जो देश को रखते हैं हर खबर से बाखबर आई टीवी नेक्स्ट मीडिया इंटरनेशनल स्कूल का ये कोर्स आपके एंकरिंग स्किल्स को करेगा इतना सशक्त मजबूत जिससे आप बनेंगे पत्रकारिता की दुनिया का वो चमकता चेहरा जो दुनिया देखेगी और पसंद करेगी
Hello and welcome. You are watching News X and I am Megha Sharma. Now, we have recently witnessed a spate of attacks against Hindus in Bangladesh who are practicing their religion in peace. Now, over the last few months, there have been countless temples that have been desecrated, idols have been defaced, houses that have been vandalized, and Hindu devotees that have been assaulted. These atrocities against Hindus in Bangladesh are a cause of deep concern. However, rather than the tangible